All right, everyone, this is the Beast Bond Gallon Kit. It does come with a lot of stuff. Uh, we got half gallon of resin there, half gallon hardener. We also have a couple of uh, mixing containers. We've got a little kit here that uh, just says free. I don't know what that's about. A couple of mixing paddles, a uh, couple of spreaders, and then uh, two vinyl gloves. So the manufacturer does recommend a room temperature of 72 degrees for optimal leveling and curing. Unfortunately, I'm working on this project in the winter in Seattle. That means the garage is out of the question and even indoors, we're looking at 65. Still, as we see here, the hardener still flows out pretty nicely, uh, as does the resin. To mix it up, I'm using a small disposable paint mixer as it's pretty impractical to properly mix this much without some power assistance. I'm also coloring it with some black liquid pigment from Composi Mold. To my surprise, this tiny 0.2 ounce bottle was able to turn a full gallon opaque black. Uh, otherwise, I was really happy with how well the product mixed up. No real bubble formation to speak of, despite using the drill and turning it for a while. Uh, it also flowed exceptionally well into my fake wood river. Uh, again, keep in mind the ambient air temp is 65 degrees, so assuming your workspace is 10-ish degrees warmer, expect even better results. Uh, if you notice here, I've got a little wood core set up with a seal coat pre-applied. I did this simply to save on material. I calculated that I would need a little over three gallons to fill the river if I left it wide open, and I only needed one gallon to do it this way. Uh, the edges, though, are still about one inch deep. I wasn't sure if that was too much to do in one pour, so I emailed Beast Bond Support to ask about maximum pour thickness. They never responded, which was pretty lame of them, uh, so I just said, oh well, and uh, did the pour all at once. I did go ahead and use my 1500 watt heat gun to pop the few bubbles that made their way to the surface. I know many people will use a torch here, but I find the heat gun to be more consistent uh, with a lower risk of burning. And then just for fun, while the epoxy was curing, I took uh, a look at it through my thermal camera. Pretty interesting to see, it really does noticeably heat up. All right, so it's been like 24 hours, and just pressing this little area here, you can, I'm not sure how you're gonna be able to see that on camera or not, but you can still kind of leave little indentations in it. So this is a pretty slow setting product I've noticed. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a full 48 hours to cure, which is what the manufacturer recommends. I ended up demolding after 48 hours. Prior to pouring, I did spray down the melamine with some silicone lubricant, uh, not even mold release. Still, uh, it appeared to do its job as the epoxy didn't really stick to it, uh, releasing very cleanly. And here's the final product after it was coated with a tabletop epoxy. I think it came out just great. Uh, two things to keep in mind if you're considering Beast Bond. One, it's a relatively slow curing epoxy. Uh, at 65 degrees, it took 48 hours before I was comfortable demolding. Uh, and two, don't plan on getting any help from the company should you need any. Other than that, it's a nice product. It mixed and poured very cleanly uh, without cloudiness or excessive viscosity, uh, despite being a few degrees colder than recommended.